Hi, my name is Brian Kaplan. Welcome to this week's Ask Brian part of our weekly newsletter. Our weekly newsletter is called Monday Morning Data Science, and you can sign up in the video description below. Today, I'm going to talk about a question that I get every year uh, when I'm helping administer the graduate program here. And it basically boils down to what are the math, what are the math prerequisites for uh, biostat? And actually, let me go back here. Um, let me make it more general in what should I do if I want a PhD or master's degree in anything related, stat, biostat, computer science, or some sort of data science program that's more mathematical like these, um, like these programs. But the, the issue we're talking about is that you don't have the math prereqs. So let me just say, I'm going to start out assuming that you, you've, you've made it through for example, high school math, you've, you've got pre-calculus and you, you know, have algebra down. If, you, if, you, if you're in a boat where you, math is a, a problem for you at that level, then it's kind of a different thing. Okay. Um, so let me just go through what is typically required for biostat. And I get this question every year. I think I might have even already done a video on this, but uh, it comes up so often in the, in the questions for, that I, the, for the form I get, I thought I'd do it again. So required, uh, most typical programs are going to, at the bare minimum, require linear algebra, which I think is incredibly important. I use linear algebra all the time in my applied work as well. Um, three semesters of calculus. Um, I use calculus probably a little bit less than linear algebra, I would say. But um, you know, to any good program is going to require you to have three semesters of calculus. And then what I would just generally call mathematical maturity. If you're going to enter into one of these programs like STAT, Biostat, computer science or some sort of really uh, math oriented data science program, you, you need more than just the prerequisites. You need some amount of mathematical maturity. And you can get that by taking a class, let's say in discrete math or something like that, that would teach you a little bit about kind of theorem proof style mathematics as well. What's often helpful, but is not required. Most places will have a way for um, getting you up to speed on this if it's needed is some sort of real analysis. I, I, I don't think most computer science programs really care whether or not you have real analysis. Statistics and biostatistics departments usually will have you take something like real analysis if you come in without it. Some, some programs do require it. Um, so what, what should you do if you need these prereqs and your goal is going to be, okay, well, I'm going to I want to get into a good program, so I'm going to start now. You know, I, I maybe had some calculus in, in high school or, you know, I took even AP calculus, but I've kind of forgotten it now because I've done other stuff for a while. You know, how long is it going to take me to get to the point where, I, you know, I would, you know, comfortably be able to attend a graduate program in one of these other disciplines? So this is kind of the timeline I would I would probably suggest. So you're going to have to start by taking some calculus and and and. I figure, you know, maybe one full year of calculus would, would do it. And then in the process, while you're taking calculus, you could, you could take linear algebra. Some, you know, you probably need to, to start out a little bit slow if you're in this boat and just take the one class, one class starting out. But then, you know, once you're into it, then you can start taking linear algebra, maybe get a year of linear algebra under your belt. And then while you're taking linear algebra, you can take some, you know, some of this mathematical maturity st style math that I'm talking about, something like a discrete math course or, or an analysis class if you're ambitious. So all in all, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, about two years is, is what I would think. If you're, if you're starting from a, a point where you don't really even remember your calculus and you want to go to one of these more mathematically oriented programs, it's going to take you about uh, two years from start to finish. Um, having said that, you know, uh, you can, um, you know, if, if you're making good progress on this stuff, and you know, get some good recommendations. You can have some of this occur in the year that you're applying, so that you know the amount of time it extends beyond going into the program um, might seem like a little bit less than two years. You you wouldn't necessarily have to have three years, you know, two years worth of coursework, then a year for applying, and then you start the program. You might be able to work it so that you can uh, you could um, in the process of the two years in the in the the latter part of the or the early part of the second year is when you're applying to programs, hopefully getting in, and then that that would uh, that would only delay it by two years. You wouldn't have the extra third year of, of applying. Okay, so there's some other options that um, uh, that you might consider as well. There's related programs with less math involved. So you know, many biostat programs. There's some 
very applied biostat programs that you can consider. Um, there's some very applied computer science programs that you can consider. There's, um, there's fields like epidemiology where there are epidemiologists working who are the, among the most theoretical and math oriented people, but then there's also quite applied epidemiology programs. So if you're interested in biostatistics, often you can find an epidemiology program that, you know, has lower math requirements, but has still is a rigorous program, has lots of um, analysis and data science oriented things related to public health in the, in the program. And so you might be able to find some sort of nice match in that regard. So, so another option would be to look at some of these related programs. Uh, a final option I would say is if you're interested in a PhD and you're starting at this, at this point, then maybe getting a master's of science along the way could help you build up prereqs in the field that you're interested in. So for example, if you're studying biostatistics and you decide to get a master's degree in biostatistics, you know, before you get your PhD, you can uh, a simultaneously learn a lot of the more theoretical biostatistical things, get a start on those, um, learn some of the more theoretical statistical things, and then in the process, take some of the math prereqs. Now, having said that, most master's programs are going to require you to at least have some calculus and linear algebra to get in, but usually a lower requirement than, than the PhD program. So um, if, if you uh, have built up a little bit of math prereqs, but really still feel like you need a little bit more before you enter into a kind of more theoretically oriented biostat program, uh, then getting an MS along the way is, is often a good idea. Of course, the issue with master's, science, master's degrees in biostatistics and statistics and uh, computer science is they're often not funded. And so uh, you have to factor in the value and the cost when you're thinking about a master's program in this way. Okay, so I hope if you're in the process of applying to graduate programs or now that it's kind of application season when you're starting, if you're starting to think about these things, I hope this was helpful for you for sort of framing your, your future. Um, keep those questions coming and I'll have another video for everyone next week.